hello guys assalamu alaikum today we gonna talk about transmission medium we have already discussed uh, previous uh, six chapters in class and i hope you all understand those six chapters this chapter is about transmission medium we have already uh, done so much work in our labs regarding transmission medium we have discussed so many things some minor things some major things of transmission medium today this lecture is about uh, uh, transmission medium and uh, what we're going to discuss today is the uh, the issues related with the physical layers uh, we'll discuss the transmission medium and uh, how transmission medium conduct the signals from source to destination uh, this can be done through wireless or wide medium there are two modes uh, the chapter is divided into three sections the first section introduces the transmission medium and defines its position in internet model we already know internet model is DOD department of defense and we also call it TCP and IP it shows that we can classify transmission medium into two broad categories uh, guided and unguided medium the second section discuss guided medium uh, in this part we will talk about tested pairs coaxial cable fiber optics we'll talk about their characteristics and the application and in the last section we'll discuss about the uncutted medium in the first part we'll describe about radio waves we'll talk about microwaves we'll talk about the the last thing as um, infrared rays we'll talk about the characteristics and their applications let's talk about the first thing which is uh, the uh, uh, transmission medium and physical layer now the question is where is this thing the transmission medium is located well we already know that this is uh, below the physical layer uh, we could uh, say that transmission medium belongs to a layer 0 uh, figure number this figure here over here shows you the idea of uh, where the transmission medium is located uh, you can see it's below the physical layer <clears throat> let's talk about a little bit uh, let's introduce a little bit uh, the transmission medium it can be broadly defined as anything that can carry information from a source to a destination in data communication the definition of the information and the transmission medium is more specific the transmission medium is usually free space metallic cable fiber optic cable the information is usually a signal that is the result of conversion of data from another form so we already discussed this conversions in chapter number four and five uh, the use of long distance communication using electric signals started with the invention of the telegraph by moores in 19th century you remember the moores codes which are usually beeps and uh, dots uh, Communication by telegraph was slow and dependent on a metallic medium. So there was a medium always required there, which is uh, we are talking about actually guided medium. Extending the, extending the range of human voice became possible when the telephone was invented in 1869. Telephone communication at that time also needed a metallic medium. The communication was, however, unreliable due to the, due to the poor quality of the wires. The lines were often noisy and the, and, the te and the technology was unsophisticated. Wireless communication started in 1895 when Hertz was able to send high frequency signals. Later Macaroni devised a method to send telegraph type messages over the Atlantic Ocean. We have come a long way, better metallic medium have been invented which is twisted pairs, coaxial cables. The use of optical fiber has increased the data rate in incredibly. Free space like air, vacuum and water is used more free efficiently in part due to, to, to due in part due to the technologies such as modulation and multiplexing that's discussed previously. As chapter uh, as uh, chapter number three, the components and the telecommunication devices use signals to represent data. These signals are transmitted from one device to another in form of electromagnetic energy, which is propagated through transmission medium. Electromagnetic energy, a combination of electric and magnetic fields vibrating in relation to each other, includes powers, 
radio waves, infrared light, visible light, ultraviolet light, X-rays, gamma rays, cosmic rays. Each of these constitute a portion of electromagnetic spectrum. So they are all part of electromagnetic spectrum. A spectrum starts from 0 hertz, goes to terahertz. <coughs> Excuse me. Each of these constitute a portion of the electromagnetic spectrum. Not all portions of the spectrum are currently usable for telecommunication. However, the medium to harness those that are usable are also limited to a few types. In telecommunication, transmission medium can be divided into two broad categories, guided and unguided. Guided medium includes twisted pairs, coaxial cables, fiber optic cable. Unguided medium is free space as shown in the figure. You can see we have guided, unguided, free space, fiber optics is guided, coaxial cables are guided, twisted pairs are guided. Let's talk about little bit about guided media, this one here. Now guided media which are those that provide a conduct from one device to another include twisted pair, coaxial cable and fiber optic cables. A signal travels along any of these media is directed and contained by the physical limits of the medium. Twisted pairs and coaxial cables are metallic copper conductors that accept and transport signals in the form of electric currents. Optical fiber on the other case is a cable that accepts and transports signals in the form of light. So this is only light. These are electromagnetic signals. Let's talk about twisted pairs. All right, you can see we have insulator and we have inside the insulator there is a conductor. We already know why we have insulators for the in interferences. Let's talk about this twisted pair cables. One of the wires is used to carry signal to the receiver and the other is used only as a ground reference. The receiver uses the difference between the two. In addition to the signal sent by the sender on one of the wires, interference like noise and crosstalk may affect both wires and create unwanted signals. If the two signals are parallel, the effect of these unwanted signals is not the same in both wires because they are at different locations relative to the noise and crosstalk sources. The result, uh, this result in a difference at the receiver by twisting the pairs, a balance is maintained. For example, let's talk about example. Suppose in one twist, one wire is closer to the noise source and the other is farther. In the next twist, the reverse is true. Twisting makes it possible that both wires are equally affected by external influences, noise or crosstalk. This means that the receiver which calculates the difference between the two receives unwanted signals. The unwanted signals are mostly calculated cancelled out. From the above discussion, it is clear that the number of twist, uh, twists per unit of length has some effect on the quality of the cable. Let's talk about the shielding and unshielded twisted pairs. Now we got we already know about shielding and unshielded twisted pairs. The, the most common twisted pair cables used in communication is referred as unshielded twisted pairs which is called UTPs. This is here UTP. You can see UTPs. IBM has also produced a version of twisted pairs for its own called uh, for its own use, and they are called STP. We already talked about IBM standards. They are called STP shielded twisted pairs. STP cable has a metal foil or braided mesh covering the in case each pair of insulated conductor. All the metal casing improves the quality of the cable by preventing the prevention of noise or crosstalk. It is bulkier and more expensive. You can see here the difference between the two. You can see there is a metal shield here which is not present here. Let's talk about the categories. Okay, the Electron Electronic Industry Association EIA has developed standards to classify unshielded to repair cables into seven categories. Categories are determined by the cable quality. We'll talk about the quality of a cable in a minute. And let's talk about the category one as the lowest and category seven as the highest. 
each EIA category is suitable for specific use. We have a table here that shows you the unshielded to space. Well, what matters here is the data rates that changes when the cables uh, with the categories of the cables. They're mostly used in LANs. Earlier they were used in telephone lines, but we don't use them anymore in the telephone lines. We only use them in LANs nowadays. So the data rate reaches to on category 6 to 200 megabits per second and in category 7 which is not used at the moment there are some issues with them so it can reach up to 600 megabytes per second <clears throat> let's talk about the connectors of uh, unshielded to pairs they are called rj45 rj stands for registered jack as shown in the figure you can see in the figure now over here we got the connector which is called RJ45 female connector and this is RJ45 male connector. We already know about the female connectors and male connectors. Now how to rate the pins? We already know that you need to, this clip has to be at the bottom. So the first pin should be here. And over here you can see that there are, these lines shows, they are the pairs of the cables. We already know about the pairs. We know one, two, three and four pairs are there for uh, UTP. Let's talk about a little bit about performances. <clears throat> One way to measure the performance of a twisted pair cable is to compare attenuation versus frequency. This is the attenuation. Usually attenuation over here is in dB per kilometer. We already discussed in the class about dB per kilometer. These are the losses. That means this much of loss will be per kilometer. So over here we can see there is a 26 gauge uh, wire. And there are there are 20 dB loss, and this is the um, 18 gauge wire. It has 10 dB loss per kilometer. <clears throat> a twisted pair cable can pass a wide range of frequencies. We can see that there are 10 kilohertz, 100 kilohertz, 2000 kilohertz. Uh, let's talk about the gauge. The, the gauge is a measure of the thickness of the wire. So how thick the wire is, is basically a gauge. So the, the thicker the cable, uh, the thicker the, the cable means the, the gauge, the higher the gauge, that means the thinner the cable and the, the lower the gauge means the, the thicker the cable. So twisted pair cables can be used in telephone lines to provide voice and data channels. The local loop, they are called local loop. The local loop is basically the connection from the exchange to your house is called local loop. So if there's a wire coming from the exchange, telephone exchange to your house, that means it's a local loop. The lines that connect subscriber to the, to the central telephone office commonly consist of unshielded twisted pair cables. Uh, we will discuss the telephone network later in chapters. Uh, most of the DSL that we use in our, at our homes are, uh, are using uh, UTPs. They are high data rate connections. Uh, we'll talk about DSL later in chapter number 14, inshallah. Now let's talk about... Uh, this is the uh, parallel flat wires, which are mostly used in... Uh, in telecommunication we can see that uh, if there are two, no two lines are coming here there, there's a noise sources which are actually interfering the, the channels we can see that the receiver will receive 16 noise here and 12 noise here but even by reducing the noise which is basically a ground uh, we will still have the effect of 4 uh, the noise over parallel li uh, wires uh, results in an uneven load and a damage signal so there may be a damage you know, signal if you are using this one for telecommunication or for voice communication so better to use a uh, twisted pairs so if you're using a uh, uh, using a twisted pair cables the cumulative effect of noise is equal on both sides so this is the ground we can see here the ground and this is the line which is if uh, you can see this is 14 this is 14 the receiver will receive a net effect of zero so they will be uh, eliminating the uh, the load or eliminating the, the the noise and significantly reduces the 
uh, the noise and we can have a better signal.